Hello friends and welcome back or welcome to my YouTube channel. I'm going to assume that this type of video is going to bring a lot of new people. So if you are new here, hi, I'm Coley and I am 27 years old. I live in Vancouver, Canada and I like to knit and today I want to talk about my knitting. <laughs> if you are a returning viewer, then you know that this YouTube channel has seen a lot of different eras. This sort of space on the internet has always been a place for me to talk about what I'm interested in, what I'm doing, what's going on in my life, and this has been what's been occupying my life for the last three years. Um, knitting completely has taken over my entire life. <laughs> like I think a lot of people during COVID, they picked up old hobbies or new hobbies. Picking up knitting was an old hobby of mine that I definitely got into thanks to the pandemic. And it resulted into me learning how to dye yarn. I started my own hand dyed yarn company called Paisley Knits. If you've never seen it before, I'll link it down below. And I have just been absolutely consumed by knitting podcasts lately. So I thought, you know what? I have a YouTube channel. Why not give it a go? So that's what we're going to do today. I'll start off with what I'm wearing. This is the Cumulus Blouse by Petite Knit. I knit this using two strands of Surrey um, from my own company. This was is Paisley Knits Swimming Surrey. The colorways are matcha and Tokyo, which was from our Japan collection last spring. I knit, can you see it? I knit the size 2XL. I think I'm on gauge for the most part. Um, and I almost always knit a 2XL from Petite Knit that's like pretty bang on. I have an 114 centimeter bust, so I kind of land smack down in the middle of that size range. So yeah, this is my favorite knit of all time. I absolutely adore it. I wear it all the time. With everything that I've ever made, this is the thing that I wear the most. It's my all time favorite and I definitely will knit this pattern again. Oh, I can tell I have not filmed a video in a long time. Okay, I have two finished objects today. And the first is a toque. This is called the Hipster Beanie and it is a free pattern from We Are Knitters that was designed by Knits by Kari on Instagram, if I'm not mistaken. And I knit this for my partner. He, I've never made him anything. This is the first thing I've ever made him, which is horrible because as of like two days from now, we've been dating for seven years, but I am a firm believer in the um, sweater curse. So he's not getting a sweater until I have a ring on my finger, but this is <laughs> a quick little knit that I just made for him. This was you knit using Paisley Knits yarn. Again, um, this is our new cloud base that I just came out with. It's a bulky base that is a blown yarn. And this is the colorway Hestia. It was from our latest um, Greek Gods collection. Um, we did a mystery yarn club last year inspired by the Gods of Olympus. And then we just did a pre-order for it. And one of the skeins that I had was not a full 100 gram skein. So I dyed it up anyways. And I just used the partial skein that I wouldn't be able to sell and made him a toque. So I used the recommended needle size, which was the eight, I think US eights. I don't know if that's, that's right. Let me go grab my notes, actually. I should probably grab my notebook <laughs> so I can tell you the actual information. Um, I knit it with, yeah, five millimeter needles, which is a US-8. Um, it's a free pattern from We Are Knitters. I already said that. Paisley Knits Cloud. I used 70 grams of our... Um, cloud base so I still had about 30 grams left over which is pretty cool because a lot of bulky hand dyed yarn that you get from a lot of people if it's in the 100% merino will usually be roughly 109 yards per 100 grams or 100 meters per 100 grams. Um, this is not 100% merino. Our, our base is a 70% baby alpaca, 7% wool, 23% recycled nylon. And it's 284 yards per 100 grams because it's blown. So you get this really beautiful, um, I have another skein of it here from another project. But you get this really beautiful, are you gonna focus? Yeah, it's like a 
almost a chainette but it's very light and fluffy and you get a lot more yardage with it because it is blown so you only need one skein for it and it was a really quick knit I knit it in a day I did the folded brim because um, this is knit double and then you knit you basically knit for like this many centimeters and then you fold it up and you knit it together and then you knit the rest of the tube so that you can get a like triple folded brim. The only thing I will say is that um, I did get gauge this way but I did not get row gauge. I have made this pattern before um, using an 100% merino and the row gauge was a lot longer and so I think if I was to knit this again with my bulky yarn I would make it longer so I think I would maybe like do the actual folded brim part to be like this long once it's folded up and then I would add a couple of centimeters or maybe even a couple of inches to the length because it's a little bit short for my taste it fits me pretty good but if I actually fold the brim where I want it to it comes up a little high for the ears so that's my only gripe with it. I The one thing I really dislike about We Are Knitter patterns in general, and I think Wool in the Gang is the same, is that it always tells you row counts. It doesn't tell you measurements. And measurements is just way more accurate. I wish it just told me like knit for 20 centimeters and then fold it and then knit for another 20 centimeters. But instead it's like knit 100 rows. So I think next time I'll just kind of go off the cuff and do it by measurements. I also added four extra stitches this time because the other one that I made was a little bit tight and this is a perfect fit. So I think I cast on 90 stitches total. And yeah, that was my first finished object and it's the first thing that I had finished this year because I got a little bit of like cast on itis back in December and cast on so many things and then I had to make a Christmas present so none of them got knit and so now I just have a ton of whips and nothing's done. <laughs> so I'm not really producing many FOs, but that's one of them. All right. And then my second FO is a marble sweater by Petite Knit, which looks like this. I will make sure to insert some clips of me wearing it um, so you can see it a little bit better, but it is just way too bloody hot to be wearing it today. This is definitely going to be something that I've knit and then it's going straight into my closet <laughs> because it's, it's a winter, it's a winter knit for sure. Like this, I don't think I'll be able to wear if it's any warmer than five degrees outside because it's a super bulky gauge um, and I knit mine using five different yarns together. I used a Paisley Knits yarn. This is our new Salty Erin base that we're going to bring in. It's 100% non-superwash 19.5 micron non-superwash wool that I just dyed a random color. And then I used two strands of fingering. One called um, Exit Buddy. This is from Woolberry Fiber Co. It's their Berry Merino, which is just an 100% superwash merino wool. I used um, Explorer Knits and Fibers Denali Sock, which is an 80-20 merino nylon two-ply. And then I used two strands of Surrey. So this one is from the Yarn Attic Co. This is in sh the colorway Shetland. And it's a 7426 um, Surrey Alpaca Silk. And then this one is also a Paisley Knits yarn. Um, it's the same breakdown as this. I'm pretty sure we use the same supplier. And this is in the colorway Athena. So these are the five yarns that I used. I'm not gonna lie, I originally, when I dyed this up, was planning on doing a light green color that looks like this. This is from our um, mystery spring boxes that we just did and the colorway is called Farm Fresh. And when I went to go dye it up, I accidentally put too much blue into the dye. I just wasn't paying attention to what spoons I was doing. I was dyeing it at night because I got really excited about getting the project and <laughs> accidentally screwed it up. So I, I did blue instead. And this is how it came out. 
and I love it. I think the fit is really great, but like I said, because it's those five strands and it's a super bulky um, gauge, it's just so warm and it's really going to be a winter knit. I've basically blocked it and I'm pretty sure it's going to go straight into my closet. I knit this though so fast. So basically what happened is I was watching Woolberry Fiber Co. She has a podcast here on the interwebs and I was watching her podcast and she was talking about a marble sweater that she was making using Woolberry yarn and she also used an Aran two fingerings and two um, surreys and I was watching her podcast and I was like oh my god a that's amazing b I definitely have all of those in stash and c I need to make one right away so <laughs> I cast this on on Saturday, I did a swatch, um, didn't block my swatch because my gauge was pretty much perfect on um, the swatch. And I was like, you know what? If it gets a little bit bigger, I don't really care. So I swatched, cast on, knit it on Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. And I cast off Wednesday night. So it took me five days, which is absolutely unheard of for me. Because as I was saying before, I wear a size 2XL most of the time for petite knit patterns and that's a lot of stitches usually, but because of the large gauge, it just flew off the needles. I used 10 millimeters needles, so a US 15, um, which is what was recommended in the pattern. And yeah, it just, it just flew and I love it so much. The only thing is I got like halfway through knitting the sleeve on day three and was like, oh my gosh, I think I might hate the blue that I picked. So I'm not 100% sure. It depends on the lighting. Some days I look at it and I love it and other days I'm like, oh, I kind of wish, I kind of wish it was this green color and not this. But it used such little yardage for each strand. I think I ended up using maybe 675 yards um, per colorway, which obviously is a lot, but if once you add them all up together, but it kind of equated to like four skeins of Aran with a little bit left over, um, one and a half skeins of the fingerings and two full skeins of the Surrey. And I have enough of it still in stash of all of these colors that I could technically dye up more Erin and knit the whole thing again with a green instead. And if I do that and I like it more, then I could always over dye this one um, a different color, like maybe dye it, um, over dye it with a dark navy or something, which could be really pretty, but I don't know. I just keep, I keep kind of flipping back and forth between whether or not I like it. Tell me what you think in the comments down below, because it's just, the, it is a very me color combo. You'll, I mean, you can tell kind of like by what I'm wearing, but if you know me from Instagram or if you know me from this channel before, I'm obsessed with pastel greens in general and blues. So yeah, I don't know. I love it. It's a great sweater. I definitely will knit one again if I, and it's a great stash buster. If you've got like a couple of skeins here or there that are all within the same color family that you're like, oh, this is not enough to be able to make an entire sweater with. If you can pair them all up to get that gauge, which is kind of what I did with this project, um, it's a great way to bust through some stash. So yeah, that's my marble sweater. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I don't know. I feel like I'm rambling a lot. I'm not really doing a good job at saying all the facts in order, but <laughs> you're just going to have to come on this ride with me. Now let's talk works in progress. I currently have four sweaters on the go and an accessory, um, which is, which is a lot for me. I, I used to be quite the monogamous knitter and I think that I produced so many more objects when I was like that. And somehow I've just kind of fallen into this trap where I have so many whips right now and I really want to get them off the needles because they're all pretty close to being like, well, not all of them, but they're all at the point where I've finished the yoke and they just need like bodies and sleeves. So I just need to like commit to one and then get it off the needles and then commit to another one. But let's get into it. So. This is my October sweater 
by Petite Knit. Again, you'll notice that I knit a lot of her patterns. That is for two reasons. One, as someone who is like mid to plus sized, I find it really hard to find patterns that are graded really well. And I've been really bummed by some pattern designers where I've knit like entire sweaters and then had to frog the entire things because the grading just like didn't work for my body. I know her grading works for me. The second reason why is because a couple years ago, was it a couple years ago or last year, um, she did a sale for the Ukraine war where she donated all the money that w of any pattern that was bought within 24 hours to the Ukraine war. So I bought almost all of her patterns, all of the ones that I was interested at least, I bought on that day so that they could go to charity. And so I've just been like working my way through them all, seeing which ones I like and which ones I don't like. So that's my little petite knit spiel, but this is the October sweater. And I have knit one of these before, just trying to see which way is the front. I think it's this way. I have knit one of these before and I really love it. It's a simple top down raglan. Um, I am knitting this with one strand of fingering and one strand of Surrey. And as you can see, I have a body. I have one sleeve and I just need to do the other sleeve and I'm gonna make this one quite cropped. So I think I only need one more inch on the body before I'm gonna get into the six inches of two by two rib that the pattern calls for. So yeah, I am knitting this on the recommended needle size and I actually went down a size for this pattern. The one that I, the first one that I made, which is in this gorgeous teal color from Explora Knits um, called To The Stars You Listen. It's like an Akotar themed colorway that she did that was like incredible, but um, I knit that one in a 2XL and it gave you a lot, a lot of positive ease. So this one I sized down to an XL and I'm really liking the fit. These are the yarns that I'm using. It is Olan Mills 100% Fine Merino from, uh, or yeah, Olan Mills 100% Fine Merino, 420 meters per skein. This is a fingering weight and it is spun in Ireland and this is the colorway Bud Burst. And it's just this absolutely stunning hot pink color. I am unbelievably obsessed with it and I am pairing it with another Explorer Knits colorway. This is Summer Solstice. I, if I'm not mistaken, this was a collaboration with um, La Mercerie, Shop La Mercerie, um, an amazing yarn store in Washington State. If you are ever in like the Seattle area and want to take a ferry over to Bainbridge Island, I highly recommend going to her shop because it's the cutest thing ever. But this is the colorway Summer Solstice and it's this beautiful Surrey color. And as you can see, it's got these really hot pink sections, which kind of match the color of this. And when paired together, they create the most incredible marled effect. I do think that this fabric is like a little bit dense for my taste. I am using the recommended needle size, which is a US six slash four millimeters, if I'm not mistaken, but I don't really mind. I think that in, if I was ever to knit with this yarn again, though I think it might not, I think she might've just closed down her, her mill. So I don't know if you can buy this anymore. I, I've still seen it in stock in some independent um, yarn stores, but her website itself is like not open anymore. And I don't think she's milling yarn anymore, which is pretty sad because I really like this. It's a really nice, like, it's really soft, but it's also textured. Um, like I wouldn't call it a rustic yarn, but it's like rustic adjacent, um, non superwash as well. And I just like, I'm really liking it. But I think that if I was to knit with that combo again, I'd probably go for something a little bit closer to worsted um, gauge and go up a needle size because it's quite dense, but I still think it'll be great for shoulder seasons here in Vancouver. DK weight in general is kind of the perfect weight sweater for Vancouver's climate because we don't really get sub-zero that often but for most of the year from like mid-September to mid-April slash May 
it's raining every day and a little bit cold so but like moderately cold so this is like perfect for that and yeah I'm chugging along I think I will do the other sleeve next and then um, crack onto the body but that is my first whip now the second project that I'm currently working on is this and this is my own design which is really exciting this is my first attempt at designing my own pattern and it's going pretty well so far so it is a top-down raglan v-neck sweater done in a really beautiful textured um seed stitch or some people call this double seed stitch some people call this double moss stitch i've also heard it called irish moss stitch i think double moss stitch yeah it's basically a four stitch pattern repeat where you're doing knit one purl one and then knit one purl one and then purl one knit one purl one knit one so you're purling your knits and knitting your purls every second row and i just love seed stitch in general or like moss stitch i just think it's so beautiful and i just love the texture that it creates and so i wanted to make a simple design with that and it's just a one stitch kind of like raglan increase all the way down i think i will end up picking up around the neck band and doing a two stitch i cord around it just to tidy up my edges because i'm not the cleanest with my um edge stitches and yeah so i'm currently on the sleeves I accidentally messed up my seed stitch though so I have to rip this sleeve back <laughs> which is kind of frustrating um I'm not in the right pattern repeat currently so I have to do that but I'm currently knitting these on uh, this pattern on a 4.5 millimeter needle so a US 7 and it's knit with two strands held together this is knitting for olives um merino in poppy rose which is this gorgeous light pink color it's just so pretty and then my second strand is explore knits and fibers hand dyed surrey alpaca in the colorway irish heather which was from her ireland collection last year that everybody went nuts over and then oops these are the two that I'm holding together. I am loving how it's knitting up. It's just, when you're working in like knit one, purl one, every once in a while, I just want like a break and I just want to knit and stock in it. So I keep like picking it up and putting it back down, but I'm really close to being done. I just have to do the sleeves and then the body, which should go pretty fast because it's on 4.5 millimeter needles. Um, and yeah, I'm really loving it. I think I want to make a second sample of it I would love to try knitting it up in two strands of Surrey and I also would love to try knitting it up in two strands of like fingering weight um, like a silk so that there are different options for people and people can try out different gauges so I'm gonna do some more swatching I don't think I wanted this originally I had started it back in like September time and then with Christmas and work getting really busy I just kind of put it aside my initial desire was to have it release around now because I think it's a perfect spring knit so it might might up might end up being an autumn thing or I might wait until next year I don't know we'll see how long it takes me to actually finish it and actually get around to grading it because Running a yarn business alone is very stressful <laughs> and really busy, so I don't always have a ton of time to work on it, but this is, I think I'm going to call it the Pebbles blouse, because it kind of reminds me, the texture kind of reminds me of like a pebbly beach, but I'm still, I'm still toying with that. So this is potentially the Pebbles blouse, potentially something else, if I can think of a better name. And yeah, so... That's my second whip. Moving on to my third whip. This is 
the Sam So Blues from Knitting for Olive. I love Knitting for Olive's patterns. I think they're really cool. Um, and I've always wanted to try knitting one. So this is my first time doing it. It's knit fingering weight, which is always a struggle. And I'm using two different colors. I am using the recommended yarn, which is Knitting for Olive's Merino. It's one of my favorite commercial yarns to use. It's just reliable. They've got great colors. Um, I'm using pomegranate, which is this really lovely red color. And then I'm using cream, which is the white. And it's a very nice, cool toned white. And I think together they just look amazing. And I think this is going to be such a classic wardrobe piece. Um, it's definitely a, uh, what, what does people always say? It's definitely a, it's not a process knit. It's a product knit. This is definitely a product knit for me, not a process knit because it's definitely a slog because it is knit on such small needles. I think they're, it's a three millimeter needle that you're using or a 2.5, um, which is what's recommended in the pattern. I did get gauge with the recommended needle size. Um, and it's just a slog because fingering weight takes a while to knit. So I've finally, it, basically it's like one of those ones where you knit um, the shoulders and the back pieces and then you bring it towards the front, cast on, knit the front piece, join in the round and then knit down and then you'll eventually have to pick up for sleeves. So it was a lot of back and forth. It was a lot of purling for a while, but now that I'm in the round, I think that it'll go faster because I just, it's just basic stockinette forever. Um, but the purling, the purling was a, was a challenge, especially because you have to change colors every like few rows, but I just love this. It's just giving me like French Riviera vibes. It's giving me Where's Waldo vibes. And I just love it. And I'm already have like seven other color combos I want to try. I would love to do it in a navy and a white. I would love to do a like forest green and cream like or like a caramelly color I'd love to do so many different like color combos I that I've been picturing I've also just discovered this yarn brand from Denmark called chaos yarn and they do these really amazing bright vibrant merinos and um surrey alpacas and I saw one from them that's like a hot pink that I think would be amazing held with a more like tan as one of these. So it'll probably be one of those things that I always have going on the go because I want like eight of them, but I'm taking my time with it and I'm not stressing too much about it. I'll probably finish this by summer is my goal because I think it'll be really good at night um, during the summertime. It would be great during the spring right now as it warms up, but at the rate I'm going, I don't think it'll be done anytime soon. So yeah, that is my Samso Blues. This is my Dorney. So I was so lucky and so honored to be able to test knit this pattern for Rebecca, who has an amazing podcast on here. She's the Crea Bay knitter. And I love all of her patterns. I think she's doing such cool design work. And I test this, knit this for her. And I absolutely loved the process of it. I finished the sweater. I got so excited. I was like about to go block it when I realized that I accidentally knit the cables backwards, like halfway through the knit. So when I split for sleeves and, um, when I split for sleeves and started knitting on the body, I, Usually what I'll do is I'll knit the body until I run out of yarn and then I'll go to, over to my sleeves and I'll knit my sleeves and then I'll go back to my body and finish it. So on this pattern, the cables go um, inwards on the sleeves and they go outwards on the body in this kind of like pattern. So as you can see, these ones, they're kind of going out from this um, center stitch and on the sleeves, they go inwards. And I think what happened was because I had just 
been working in the body for so long and I had like the pattern repeat in my head that they go out and then in and then out and then in. I, when I s picked up for the sleeves, I just was following that pattern repeat that was I was doing on the body, but it was backwards. So I knit both sleeves backwards. And then when I switched back to the body, because I knew in my head that they were backwards, I knit the rest of the body backwards. <laughs> Which is like, if you knit one cable wrong, that's one thing. But if you knit everything wrong, that's another thing. So I had to rip the bat body back. I had to rip the sleeves back. I also ended up taking the neck out only because um, I decided I wanted to use a smaller needle size because the neck was like sticking out a little bit. But I technically did still finish the test knit in time and I was able to give um, Rebecca my weights and how much I used of the yarn and my yardages and stuff because I did finish it. Everything was just backwards. So I've been slowly trying to muster up the energy to <laughs> fix it. I've fixed one of the sleeves and then I have another sleeve and then a little bit left on the body to go. I probably want to do like another 15 centimeters would be my guess. So that's my Dorney. I love it so much. I'm knitting it using Paisley Knits Cloud, which is so funny. I feel like I've been saying that I'm knitting everything with my own yarn, but I really actually genuinely don't knit with my own yarn that often. I really love using other dyers um, stuff and other brands and I like testing yarns. I love the process of like buying yarn. Um, I'm a consumer just as much as I am a maker. So I <laughs> feel like I have a lot of things. This is just a custom colorway that I dyed up. I was torn between doing the Dorney between a like dark green and a dark blue. And so I kind of just threw some dye into the pot and was like, whatever it'll be will be. And it kind of came out in between. So it's this nice teal color. It's going to be so warm. This is again on our cloud base, which is that alpaca wool, alpaca wool nylon blend. It's recycled nylon, by the way. Um, blown yarn. So you get a lot of yardage and it's amazing. I, it's like one of my favorite things I've ever knit with. It's just so soft and so plush and it's kind of like the same feeling as knitting with a Surrey, just not as like hairy. So yeah, I love it. And again, I feel like this is going to be one of those things that I finish and then it's going to go straight into the closet because I won't be able to wear it because it's going to be too warm now, but that's okay. It'll be perfect and in pristine condition, ready for me to go and wear it in the autumn time. How many have we done? One, two, three, four. Okay. I got one more sweater project. I think I lied before. I think I said I had four sweaters. I actually have five, but this one is a project that I've been working on for ages and is taking me forever and I think will take me forever because it's a cardigan. And it looks like this. This is the Oversized Seasons Cardigan by Ozetta and it's knit in half fisherman's rib and I'm knitting it using Explorer Knits and Fibers. Again, can you tell she's my favorite indie dyer? Um, I'm using her Carlsbad Worsted Weight, and this is the colorway Fresh Balsam. I forgot to grab a full skein of it, but you can see the ball here. It's just this really pretty teal with like different hints of green and little flecks of orange. Yeah, it's really pretty. And this is just proving to be quite the slog to get through. And I think the reason that I don't pick it up that much is because you knit the um, button band at the same time that you're knitting the body. And I think that that just like, because it's so finicky every time, like you have to kind of like switch needles and you have to switch the smaller needles to do the band and then you switch again and then you knit across the body. I just like get annoyed with how finicky it is and then I put it down. Um, even though like half fisherman's rib in knit flat is awesome because every other row you're just knitting. Um, whereas when you knit half fisherman's rib in the round, you are purling on that row, but because it's flat, you knit on that second row. 
so that part takes a while and I think like the more I get into it when the body gets bigger and I'm doing like more stitches on the body and I don't have to do this little fiddly bit as often I might start doing it faster but I'm in no rush for this one I feel like this will be one of those things that I just like pick up here and there and it might take me two years to knit I <laughs> I started it last summer and then it lived in a bag and then I've just picked it up again recently so it'll just be one of those things that I pick up here and there but yeah I am knitting it on US 8s or 5 millimeter needles which I think is the recommended needle size within the pattern it's a worsted weight yarn like I said before and um yeah I think it'll be really pretty I don't knit a lot of cardigans just because I really hate knitting flat in general I don't like purling that much I just find it exhausting and it hurts my wrists so I don't do it too too often but I think the I thought I could do this because it's the um half fisherman's rib thing so I was like oh well I don't have to purl really all that much because like three quarters of the stitches are knit stitches but this little double knitted button band is proving to be my arch nemesis but that's okay I still really like how it's gonna come out and we're just here to have a good time we're not here to like produce things super fast it's about the journey not the destination right <laughs> okay so that's it for my sweater projects I know it's a lot uh what uh five sweaters to me is way too many whips to have on the go and I swear to god I the next time I film one of these at least one of these have to be done if not two of them I'm hoping I can just powerhouse through them and get um a couple of these off the needles within the next month because I also like want to cast on new things and I just don't want to cast on any more sweaters because a most of the sweaters I knit like I was saying before are like DK weight which means they all use the same needle size <laughs> and I only got two sets of needles so I don't want to keep um starting new ones and yeah it's just frustrating me okay on to my last whip this is a whip that I think every person and their dog has ever made and this is the half and half triangle wrap from Pearl Soho. It is a free pattern. If you've never heard of it, I am shocked, but I haven't gotten that far in. I, okay, Suki, did you just hear that? Him gagging in the back. My very old senior dog makes a lot of senior dog sounds. Okay. So this is my half and half triangle wrap. Just recently at the beginning of this month, I went on a trip up north to Haida Gwaii for my cousin's memorial. And um, it's such an amazing place, but I was getting on the flight and we it's like a two hour flight north. And I was like, I don't wanna bring any of these sweaters cause they take up so much space and they're like kind of finicky. And I just wanna like knit on something and not have to think about it too much. So the night before the flight, I cast this on and I made pretty good progress on it while I was there. So I'm pretty stoked on it. This is knit on US 3.75 needles, which is not the recommended needle size, but I am knitting this using sport weight, not fingering weight because I don't hate myself. I am using Paisley Knits yarn again. Um, yeah, I swear, I don't usually knit that much with my stuff, but just seems to be what's on the needles currently. This is our um, sport weight called Sailing Sport. It's a 100% baby alpaca yarn that is the most incredibly soft thing to ever exist. I love it so, 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 so much. It's my favorite base, I think, that we carry. Um, and it's not something that I see other indie dyers carrying that much. In general, I try and carry bases that, like, not everyone does because I want people to have options and I want people who maybe have wool allergies or don't like superwash have those kind of opportunities and I think that colorways just die so nice on alpaca anyways so this is a sport weight so I'm knitting it on 3.75 needles I cast on 200 stitches which is kind of in between the smaller size and the larger size. I have made one of these before using our sport weight. Um, 
I made it for my godfather's wife for Christmas. She was my secret Santa. My whole family, we all do secret Santa every year and she was mine last year. So I made her one in two custom colorways, uh, like dark green and a lighter green. Um, she's got red hair and it just like, they're her colors. So I dyed those up from, for her and knit this for her. And when I knit that one, I had knit with, I think 180 stitches, which is still smaller because the gauge is a lot larger. And I ended up using like two full balls and then only needed like 10 grams of a third ball, which annoyed me. So I cast on more stitches this time, which means it'll be even bigger. It'll probably end up being like, my guess would be five inches bigger than the larger size. So it's basically gonna be a blanket once I block it out, but less stitches because the gauge is bigger. I am doing wrap and turns um, like it calls for in the pattern, though I use the technique that Stacy from Stress Knits uploaded on her YouTube channel. I basically just watched her tutorial because she is the half and half triangle queen and has made so many of them. So I use her wrap and turn technique. And then I, only other thing that I'm changing is I am slipping, I'm doing a like slip knit slip and then knit slip knit um i cord edge on the sides and then instead of just doing a basic cast on i did an i cord cast on this time which was my first time doing that and i really like the way it looks but then i was watching another podcaster recently can't remember who it was but they said on theirs they did a provisional cast on and then at the end took those stitches and did an i cord bind off which I think would also be pretty nice. Um, I will do an I-cord bind off on this as well. I just wanted that really nice neat edge all the way around and I-cord all the way around. I think that that would look better than the I-cord cast on just because the I-cord cast on is quite tight. And I think my I-cord bind off tends to be looser. And I know these this I-cord slip stitch side that I'm doing is a little bit looser. So if I ever make another one of these, I'll probably do that. But for now, I did an I-cord cast on 200 stitches, slipping the edges, and knitting it on sport weight. So 3.5, 3 no, 3.75 millimeter needles. And it's just a really mindless knit. I like to throw this like in my purse. So if I'm going to the hair salon to get my hair done, or if I'm on like in the car and we're heading somewhere, or like I said, like on the plane, this is just like my favorite go-to. I don't really have to pay attention. I don't have to watch what I'm doing really. Um, mindless knit. I'm using the colorway Poseidon, which is one of our most popular colorways of all time. This is from, again, our Greek gods collection that we just launched. And I think I'm going to pair it with a yellow, uh, the color Apollo. I'll put a picture up so that you can kind of see the combo that I'm thinking of. I don't have any of it up here with me, but I've got a lot of time before I decide that. I think I'm only 30 rows in and 68 rows is when you hit the halfway point <laughs> in terms of number of stitches. I know it's not the halfway point of like 200, but yeah, 68 stitches, you'll have knit half the, half the color. But that's my half and half triangles wrap. I love this pattern. I totally get why it's hyped. It's really mindless. If you're someone who likes basic garter stitch or like stocking it in the round and likes to just like knit forever and not have to think too much, that's my fave. Okay, that's everything that I'm working on, which is nice. Um, now I'm gonna get into some acquisitions. I just went to Washington to La Mercerie, the shop that I was mentioning before down on Bainbridge Island, just outside of Seattle. They were doing a pop-up for Explore Knits and Fibers. I got to meet Allie in person. She's so sweet. Absolutely adore her. I had so much fun chatting with her for ages. And um, yeah, we picked up some yarn at the shop. And I thought I would walk you through what I bought from the pop-up. And then also I picked up a couple of other little bits for another project. So from Allie's pop-up, I picked up two different colorways. The first is 
this really beautiful fiery red color called Pike Place. I got two skeins of the Baby Surrey Alpaca. And it's just this really pretty, like, not quite red, not quite orange color. I would have gotten more if there was more there, but by the time I got to my turn in the queue, this was all that was left. So I snagged the last two skeins, and I'm going to use it either for, like, a beanie, or I was thinking of using it with a Sophie shawl, maybe, or something along those lines. I did end up ordering from EKF's last update. She just did her National Parks update and I got some Yaki which is another really fun bright red but a little bit different tones. I think it's like a cooler undertone. This is a bit more of a warmer undertone but I think the two of them will look really good together and she just came out with non-super wash yarns so I got that in this. So I have enough yardage. I got two skeins of that to go with these two skeins and I'll make some sort of accessory. Maybe a Sophie shawl maybe something else. And then I picked up some of my favorite, this is my like probably my favorite colorway from her of all time. It's not like the most unique colorway, but it's just the most beautiful neutral. And this is linen. Um, I got three skeins of Surrey and four skeins of Rocky's Decay because I had some of this and some of Rocky's Decay laying around in stash. That's this. I had it laying around in stash and I didn't have enough um, to make a sweater and I really wanna make a sweater of it. So I got enough to kind of supplement my stash so that I can hold these two together. And my idea is to make either the Ingrid sweater by Petite Knit or it, the, I think it's called the Guernsey Genser from Samnis Garn. I have the booklet. Let me go grab it. I have quite a few of these um, little booklets from Samnis Garn. I absolutely love them. And I think it's, is it in this one? Yeah. So this is the Guernsey Genser. And it's pretty similar to the one from Petite Knit, but what I like about this one more than Petite Knit's one is where this cross hatching kind of sits on the chest. And I like the neck on this one more, but I don't totally love this little like mountain section kind of towards the bottom. And then there's another knitwear designer by the name of, I want to say it's like Skull, Skull Studio? S-K-A-L-L. -L. And they have a pattern that's also really similar to both of these called the Noah. And the, in the Noah, instead, it has like the similar to the one from Sanna's Garn where it's like the cross hatch kind of pattern goes across the chest. But instead of those little mountains in the Noah, it has this little like pearl bump staircase um, type thing. I'll insert a picture somewhere. And so I think I might just like hybrid all three of them together and take the elements that I like from some of them and not the others. The gauge is pretty similar on all of them. They all kind of use that like worsted-ish weight more or less. So I'll probably take the charts from this one and the charts from the Noah and apply it to the Ingrid sweater and make kind of like a hybrid with it. So that's my plan with this. And that's what I got from the EKF pop-up. But then I went back the following day because when we were there at the pop-up, it was so busy and there was just so many people and it was really hard to like look around and actually see the shop. So I went back the following day. Had to quickly pause because my memory card had to had just run out, so I had to replace it. But I went back the next day. And I did so because I just got this yarn from Treehouse Knits um, in a pre-order. This is from her Stranger Things collection, and this is the colorway Amber. 
and she just came out with this new base called Truffula Cashmere and it's 81% superwash merino, 19% cashmere. And it's supposed to be an alternative to a like Surrey or a mohair. And I was super intrigued with it. So I picked this up in that pre-order and I wanted to find a yarn to hold with it to make a Moby sweater. So I went back to the shop the following day and looked around at all of their different yarns and what they had and I ended up landing on this from Knitting for Olive. So this is the two of them together. As you can see, they're not they're not a perfect match. This one, I don't know if the camera's going to pick this up, but this one's a little bit more like yellowy or like has like almost a greener undertone to it, whereas this one is a little bit warmer, has a little bit more red undertones to it, but I thought that they'd be close enough to go together. So I picked up a sweater's quantity worth of this knitting for Olive to hold with the sweater quantity of Truffula that I got. And I did a swatch. And y'all, is this not the most like beautiful thing you've ever seen in your whole life. I was a little bit worried that the fingering wouldn't be the right weight to hold with it because um, I think the I think the yarns that she uses in the actual pattern is an Aran weight. No, I think she uses like knitting for all of heavy merino with a mohair or something along those lines in the actual Moby sweater. And I went with the lighter one, but it worked totally fine and I perfectly got gauge. And I just, I love it so much. Also this superwash merino cashmere blend is really, really nice. I'm super excited to actually knit it up. So this will be my next cast on. I think once I get everything else off the needles. Though that might not be true. I might end up um, switching gears into like some more summer knits. Like I want to make a few tank tops, but this is my next sweater cast on for sure because I just am so obsessed with how the swatch came out and I think that these two worked really well together. And that's everything knitting wise I wanted to talk to you guys about today. I thought I would add in a little like book segment here at the end and talk about whatever I'm reading recently because I do have quite a lot of book videos here on this YouTube channel, but I have been in like one of the worst reading slumps of my entire life. I haven't been able to finish a book since last summer, which is absolutely unheard of for me. I, when I was younger, I used to average like 200 books a year um, into my adult years. I was usually around 50 books a year to 70 books a year. Um, and then last year I read like 10 books and half of them were Heartstopper, <laughs> which is a graphic novel series that I love. But Paisley Knits, like my yarn company, just like exploded in so many different ways that I just never thought was physically possible. And so we've been working 24 seven nonstop because I had a full-time job, which I've now reduced my hours on um, before that. And so I was basically just working two full-time jobs and it was absolutely crazy. My brain's just been so fried. So I've been struggling to get anything read, but I did buy some new books and I thought I could show you those quickly. I literally just bought these yesterday. I was at getting my hair done, um, I, getting my roots touched up and um, one of my favorite independent bookstores um, is right next door to where I get my hair done. So I just popped my head in, ended up leaving with four books. You know how it is. I feel like if you're a reader or if you're a knitter or if anything and you walk past a store that has one of your hobbies, you end up walking out with stuff, even if you didn't mean to. So the ones that I'm the most excited about, this here is Tauhu um, by Kotuku Titihua Natal. I probably mispronounced that horribly and I'm really sorry if I did, but this is a novel that is kind of like told within like vignettes, sh short story, poetry format. It's apparently quite experimental. And it imagines um, Vancouver Island and Otorua, New Zealand as two islands side by side because the author is half um, Indigenous um, Coast Salish and half 
Māori from New Zealand. So she's got two indigenous heritages and it kind of marries the two indigenous cultures together and she um, talks about um, po a post-colonial world within the spectrum of these two places, imagining them side by side. Um, it sounded amazing. It just came out literally a couple of days ago. I think its publishing date is technically April 12th, even though it's the 7th, but they already had it on display. So I'm really, really excited about this. I just got back from New Zealand. I was there at the beginning of this year to visit my best friend. And it was a trip that I was supposed to do at the beginning of COVID. And then my flight was literally booked for the day that the borders shut um, here in Canada and in New Zealand. So sad, March 21st. It was almost three years ago today, but yeah, I flew out for my birthday this year, which is um, at Christmas, and was there for three weeks. So. I feel like because we just like went to a bunch of museums um, and learned a lot about the Māori culture, I'm really excited to see how this author marries that with the Coast Salish indigenous culture that I'm more familiar with here in BC. I then got the Ballad of Perle... Per per I cannot speak. Perilous Graves by Alex Jennings. And I've had this on my TBR for a really long time. I do have Libro FM's ALC... Um, program for influencers, I guess I quantify in that because I talk about books on this space. And so I do get advanced listener copies. And this is one of the ones that I did end up getting and then I never got around to reading about it. But it's talk it's like a magical story about ghosts in New Orleans that like come out of pianos, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know too too much about it. But it sounded really good in the store. And I have been wanting to read the audiobook for a while and I really like to listen and read physically at the same time. Siggy! Don't lick your paws. Stop that. Sorry. Um, I like to listen and read at the same time. So, excited to do that. Then I got Sea Change by Gina Chung and this is the story of a woman in her 30s who is estranged from her mother and her boyfriend has just left her and she works in a ball aquarium and becomes best friends with an octopus. And then that octopus is sold to a wealthy investor and she feels like her life is um, falling apart. And yeah, I like um, reading stories about women in their mid twenties, mid thirties, trying to figure their life out after things happen because <laughs> I feel like that's me. Um, and yeah. And then the last one, which is the one I'm the most excited for, is Notes on an Execution by Dania Kukafka. And this is the story about a man who is on death row. He's scheduled to die in 12 hours. And it tells the story of his life through a kaleidoscope of different women who um, had impact on his le um, life. Um, so we get to learn about basically what led him to being on death row from the perspective of all these different women, like his mother, his sister, the homicide detective that arrested him. And I've heard nothing but amazing things by the, about this. Every one of my favorite booktubers has given this five stars. And so I think this might be the one that gets me out of the reading slump. I think this is what I'm going to pick up. I'm literally going to try and start it today after filming all of this and editing it. So this is one that I'm really excited for. I had this idea of doing a video to try and get me back into reading where I read all of um, the books on my bookshelves that one of my favorite booktubers have given five stars, but I haven't quite like dove into it yet because again, time, but this is one of the ones that would be on the list. So I think if I do it, this will be the one that I start with and I really want to get into it and we'll see. But yeah, so those are the four books I bought. That's all the yarn that I have to talk to you about today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Let me know in the comments down below. Tell me what you're knitting on. Tell me who you are. If you're new here, you can subscribe. I'd love that. And I think maybe I'll make this like a monthly thing where I just update you guys on my knitting, make it like a little knitting podcast type thing. I might still film book videos alongside this. Um, I also like am really desperate to go through my entire stash, reorganize my stash, do a big D stash, um, and like 
reorganize all my yarny bits because right now they're kind of living everywhere. So if that's something that you guys would be interested in seeing, I could film it if you want. I thought that might be fun. So if you are interested in doing a big stash organization with me, let me know down below and maybe I can do that. And if no one's interested, then I won't do it. <laughs> um, but thanks for hanging out with me. I bet this video is like 10 hours long. So hopefully you made it to the end. And if you did, thanks. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye. <laughs>